so nth roots and rational exponents. We've dealt with these before, so I'll go over them kind of quickly. A square root is when we're looking for a pair of things to cancel out. So in the example here for the square root of 16, we can cancel out the two twos. We're going to write one down. And we have two other twos, so we're going to cancel those out as well. And we're left with 2 times 2, which is just equal to 4. What I want to call special notice to is notice here that it's x to the 1 half power. That rational exponent means it's equivalent to the square root of a number. In a cubed root, you'll notice that we have x to the 1 third power. So I'm taking out these equals because that is actually not true. We have x to the 1 third power. The way we deal with a 1 third is to make it a cubed root. So x to the 1 third power is the same thing in this example here as saying 16 to the 1 third power. So these are equivalents. So 16 to the 1 third power is the same thing as the cubed root of 16. We can simplify that and again because it's a 3 out here on the radical, we're looking for three things. So three twos, right one down, and then we're looking for the cubed root. We're looking for the cubed root of two because that's what's left over in our cubed root. Fourth root, again, fourth root of 16 is the same thing as saying 16 to the 1 fourth power. And we can simplify this again. Because it's a 4 out here, we need 4 items. So we need to be able to cross out 4 things. So 1, 2, 3, 4 in order to write down 1 or to get rid of it. There's nothing left in the square root, so we don't need to rewrite it. The nth root, or x to the 1 to the n, x to the 1 divided by n power, that's again equivalent here to writing 16 to the 1 divided by n power. And again, that's equivalent to the nth root of 16. So I want to make sure you notice how we're navigating between a rational exponent and the root. So because we don't know what this n is for that example, we can't actually solve this, so we're going to say we're done. So let's try a couple of examples. We have the cubed root of 54 x to the fourth. So if we break that down here, that's the cubed root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times x times x times x times x. So here's how we simplify this. We did the roots. And when we start crossing things out, this is what your answer should be. But let's show you how we got there. We have, it's a cubed root, so again, we're looking for three. I have three threes, one, two, three. I can pull that out and write it down right here. I have three x's, one, two, three. And then I could write that x down right here. The leftovers are two, and x. So we keep that in the cubed root. So the cubed root of 2x. Example 2, same idea. We're going to want to go ahead and break that down. And notice here that it's not 1 third, it's 2 thirds. So I'll show you how we deal with that. So we still deal with that divide 3 exponent, and that still becomes the cubed root of 8x squared. What we did here is we took this 2 as part of our exponent and left it alone. So it's still our squared power. Next thing we did is we broke that up. Since it's a quantity squared, we know we have 8x squared times 8x squared. We broke that down into all of these values. And then we start pulling things out. So here's how we got there. Because it's a cubed root, we need three. So one, two, three twos. We write one of them down here. We have 
another set of another I guess three of twos so we canceled those three twos and we wrote one of them down here and we have one two three X's so we wrote that one X down here again we still have leftovers we have an X left over in the cube root so we just write it down here one last step to simplify we have 4x times the cube root of x as our final answer. Arithmetic of roots, very simple. Follow these two steps and then it'll be very easy for you. First, we want to simplify the roots to determine if the terms could be added. If the roots are the same, they can be added. If they can't, or if the roots are different, they can't be added. Simple as that. So let's look at example one. Example one can be simplified because that's step one. The cube root or the square root of eight, because we've done it so many times, should be three, because the three was originally there, times two, and we have a square root of two left inside, minus two square root two. So we're going to simplify this bottom one real quick. So 3 times 2 is 6. So we really have 6 square root of 2 minus 2 square root of 2. So according to question or part 2, it says if the roots are the same, they can be added. So looking at our roots, this is root 2, this is root 2. They're the same exact root, so we're really just doing... 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 square root of 2 is our final answer for that one. So if we look at example 2, we're going to do the same exact thing. So we know 3 square root of 8 is 6 square root of 2. And then we're going to subtract by 2 square root of 3. So this should be very easy to notice. Notice how both of their roots are different. One is square root of two, one square root of three. Because they're not the same, you're automatically done. There's nothing else we can do to this, so don't force it. We're done. Now it's your turn. Try these four problems and we'll take a look at them in class. And again, keep in mind, if we went fast, be sure to let me know. Be sure to ask questions, or if you need to, rewind this video and rewatch it. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.